Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns that are coming up for sale in their February 2015 regional auction. And there was a, a lot that I saw in the catalog that was a pair of interesting Civil War era revolvers that I thought we should definitely take a look at. They are stars. We have a double action star and a single action star. I think the, the history behind these and the mechanics behind them are actually pretty interesting. Um, a lot of people may not realize the stars actually were quite prevalent in the Civil War, making up a total of almost 13% of the revolvers used by the Union Army, uh, in addition to the much more commonly recognized Remingtons and Colts. So Star was actually a commercial revolver design that existed right before the Civil War. Um, initially, Star made a 36 caliber, or Navy, uh, caliber double action revolver. Uh, 1858 or so, it really wasn't selling very well, and so he decided to, to change it up and offer it as a 44 caliber, or army caliber, revolver, and was able to successfully convince the Ordnance Department to purchase a whole bunch of them. Uh, the Ordnance Department initially purchased about 20,000 uh, 44 caliber double action star revolvers. Um, the numbers vary a bit because of negotiations that went back and forth over the number of guns and the price. Um, Ultimately, if I recall correctly, about 16,000 were delivered to the Army in 44, plus about another 5,000 that were sold commercially in 44. Now, before we get to the difference between the single action and the double action, I think we should uh, bring the camera back here and take a little bit of a closer look at exactly how the double action gun works, because I think it's pretty interesting. So these were designed by a man named Ebenezer Starr. He was born in Yonkers, and these were manufactured in Binghamton, New York. He originally patented this double action trigger mechanism in as early as 1856. Uh, like I said, sold the guns until uh, 1858 in 36 caliber, then went to 44. Uh, ultimately, because of the Civil War contracts he got, by 1861, the Star Factory was quite the large concern and employed 225 men, which, like I said, quite, quite the large factory at the time. Now, the original gun was a double action, so we'll look at that first. So one thing that distinguishes the double action star from other double action revolvers then and now is that the trigger is really just a cocking lever. What it does is cock the hammer like so. And then this little detent at the back of the trigger guard is actually the trigger. That's what fires the gun. So if you want to shoot accurately, you can cock the hammer with the front trigger and then fire with the back. If you need to shoot quickly, in the heat of battle, say, you can pull the cocking lever all the way through and the, the back of that cocking lever trigger will actually hit the real trigger. It's a very strong trigger pull. So the, the back of this trigger hits this trigger and fires the gun that way. Uh, like I said, it is an extremely stiff trigger pull in double action. It does also have this little lever on the back of the trigger, which if you loosen this screw, this lever will slide down and actually hit the back of the frame and prevent you from hitting the trigger. So sliding this down allows the gun to sort of fungal function in single action by uh, limiting the function of this trigger to only cocking the hammer. So you would pull the trigger, which cocks the hammer. You then release the trigger, move your finger back here, and fire with a much lighter, crisper trigger. So this is a 44 caliber uh, revolver, six shot. Has a pretty standard uh, ramrod for loading cartridges, or loading uh, ball. Disassembly is very easy. We have a screw right here in the frame, which is pretty cool. Even on this original example, this screw is nice and easy to remove. So that comes out. Go ahead and put the gun at half cock. And then the frame pivots open on this screw. The frame opens all the way up and the cylinder drops out. One of the other really nice advantages to Star's design was that there is no separate cylinder axis pin. This is, made, is built into the cylinder itself so that there's no way fouling can get in between the pin and the cylinder and cause it to jam up, which was a problem on, on Colt revolvers. In addition, we have a nice big recess back here 
for the, the finger, which is the part that you can see this moves up, which engages in the ratchet teeth on the back of the cylinder that rotates the cylinder. Uh, this hole is very nicely and cleanly filled by the cylinder. If I can get it in there. One of the other problems with Colt revolvers, uh, both originals and today's replicas, is that bits of fired cap are liable to fall into the action and jam up the cylinder. Star's design prevented that. Uh, there's really no, no place where a piece of cap can fall in and cause problems there. You can see that there are two cylinder stops on the cylinder for each chamber, plus a third one at the back right here. So what we have, the, there's, there's a set of six that interact with this stop on the trigger. All right, so you can see here that we have engaged the cylinder stop with a chamber directly under the hammer. That would be in a position ready to fire single action. However, we have the hammer at half cock right now. I can also move the cylinder slightly so that it engages in one of the stops while the, uh, the hammer is directly in between cylinders. So this is how you could carry the gun safely with all six cartridges, all six chambers loaded, is to use a cylinder stop to use a cylinder stop where the, uh, the gun is in between cylinders so you don't have a cap under the hammer. Finally, the cylinder stops at the back here, this little V-shaped detent, that was used for the double action trigger. You can see here, when I have the trigger fully, or the cocking lever, fully rearward, we have a stop that comes up here. That would engage in one of these V-notches at the back of the cylinder to lock it during double action fire. Reassembly is very simple. We simply take the cylinder, drop it back into, into its nest there, close the frame, reinsert the frame screw, tighten it up till it comes through, and the gun's reassembled and ready to go. So one of the problems that Star ran into with these double action revolvers was their cost. Uh, at the time to the government, they cost between 20 and $25, depending on the contract negotiation. And that was really quite a, quite a lot of money. In addition, troops in the field really didn't like this double action system. Uh, the trigger pull was very heavy. A lot of officers felt that the mechanism was too com excuse me, too complex. And just not very popular. So what Star did partway through the, the war, in fact, uh, in 1863, was they abandoned this double action and redesigned the gun with a very traditional basic single action trigger. So with the single action star, we now cock the hammer by hand, and we have a very normal trigger. Pull the trigger, drop the hammer, done. This was able to significantly reduce the cost of the guns. The government cost of the single action star was only $12, so about half of what the double action gun cost. This now operated the exact same way as the Colts and Remingtons and other guns that officers and soldiers were more familiar with. That made them more popular. Um, just all in all, simplified the design. Now disassembly remains the same. We pull this screw, pop the frame, cylinder comes out. The cylinder has stayed the same. Uh, you can see it no longer has the double action stops at the back edge of the cylinder, but everything else is identical. You can see the hand in there. When you cock the hammer, the hand lifts up. That rotates the cylinder. Reassembly is the same. We just drop the cylinder in. Close the frame and replace the screw. Ready to go. Ultimately, about 30,000 of these single action guns were purchased by the Union government. So even more of the single actions than the double actions made it into the war. So ultimately, the Star Company folded 
uh, went out of business in 1867, pretty much right after the end of the Civil War. Um, the, the problem they had was that they didn't really have a good dynamic sales department. They had a very good revolver technically, uh, in many ways better than Colt and the other companies uh, that were selling revolvers at the time, but they didn't have someone to really go out and promote the brand and, and make it popular with the public. So when the easy military contracts from the war dried up, the company just didn't really have, uh, have the, the motivation, it seems, to, to continue producing. They just accepted the fact that the, the easy work was done and they shut down and went on to do other things. These two, of course, still exist here. If you'd like to add them to your own collection, they are for sale in Rock Island's auction. So I have a link below to the, the catalog page at Rock Island. You can take a look at the, the notes they have and the, the high-res pictures. Um, these two revolvers are actually a single lot together, so you could get them for the price of one. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Learned something about a new Civil War revolver.